Okay, so welcome to this next video on mitosis. So in this next video, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start actually talking about mitosis. But before we just do that, I want to talk about the different levels of the um, uh, cyclin-dependent kinases uh, along the cell cycle. Okay, so if we plot a graph against time, so on this x-axis we have time, so we'll start off with the G1 phase of the cell cycle here. Then we've got the S phase, then G2, and then M's going to be really squashed in on the end. There's M, okay? And uh, on the uh, Y-axis will be level of activity, basically, or level of uh, expression, let's say. Okay, right. So, um, we're going to talk about the different cyclin-dependent kinases because these really drive the different processes that are happening uh, at different points along the cell cycle. They're very important. So, in G1 phase, you have a gradual rise in the concentration of uh, the G1 CDK. Okay? So, this is the G1 CDK. And um, this is also called um, the cyclin DCDK4 complex. So it's G1 CDK is cyclin D CDK4. Okay, and um, we've seen uh, that as cyclin D CDK4 concentration uh, gets higher and higher towards the end of G1 phase, what happens is this starts phosphorylating the retinoblastoma protein, and that causes the release from the retinoblastoma protein of the E2F transcription factors with their dimerization partner. Okay. We've also seen that G1, uh, G1 CDK basically remains high throughout all of the cell cycle and then comes down at the end in M phase. Okay, so this is the graph for the G1 CDK, and I'll do that in blue. So it's high pretty much throughout uh, the cell cycle. Okay, and we've also seen that the, one of the things contributing to the rise in the activity of G1 uh, CDK towards the G1S checkpoint, uh, which then drives you through the G1S checkpoint by phosphorylating and inactivating the retinoblastoma protein, is this um, rise in another uh, cyclin-dependent kinase known as the G1S CDK, which spikes like this at the checkpoint between uh, the growth one phase and the synthesis phase. So this is a very important checkpoint because when you move from G1 to S, you uh, begin the actual replication of the DNA. And once you've replicated the genome, uh, then you're pretty much committed to actually going through the cell cycle. So this is a very important step, basically. So this G1S CDK spikes at the G1S checkpoint, hence its name. And it is also called uh, cyclin E CDK2 complex. Okay. And um, we know that from previous videos that cyclin E CDK2 actually phosphorylates and inactivates a protein known as P27, which inactivates cyclin DCDK4 complexes by binding to CDK4 and inhibiting its interaction with cyclin D. So, when cyclin E CDK2 levels go up in the cytoplasm of the cell, then it inhibits the P27, and that means that cyclin D CDK4 complexes can go up, basically. So, this inhibits P27, and P27 in turn inhibits cyclin DCDK4. So when this goes up, P27's activity goes down, and therefore cyclin DCDK4 goes up. Right, okay, um, so um, that's one of the ways in which this contributes to the movement from G1 to S. Also, cyclin E CDK2 complexes, or these G1S CDKs, they directly also phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein, inhibiting it just like the cyclin D CDK4 does, and uh, then uh, changing its conformation so that it releases the E2F transcription factors with the uh, DP, uh, and um, then um, causing, um, ca well, causing the movement from G1 to S. So both of these also inhibit the retinoblastoma protein. So, uh, when they, their levels go up, retinoblastoma's activity goes down, and since it inhibits the E2F transcription factor with its dimerization partner, 
by uh, sequestering it basically in a snare. Uh, when uh, retinoblastoma's activity goes down, E2F uh, with its dimerization partner is going to go up basically. And these are now going to drive the transcription of cyclin A. Okay, so in the next portion of the cell cycle, what you get is a rise basically in the next CDK, uh, which remain, uh, remains high through S phase and G2 phase and then goes down towards the end of G2. This is the um, S CDK, the synthesis phase CDK. And this basically is the cyclin A bound now with CDK2. So basically, when, uh, when you activate the E2F transcription factors with their dimerization partner, they increase the transcription and therefore the translation uh, and therefore the expression of cyclin A. So cyclin A goes up in the cytoplasm. It binds to its CDK2, the cyclin-dependent kinase 2. And uh, these are the... Um, these form the SCDK together, and they basically drive the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. So they drive uh, the firing of the origins and the actual replication of the DNA. Now, finally, in uh, M phase, what is going to happen is another CDK is going to rise, and this is the M CDK. Okay, so in here, at the very end, what's going to happen is this M CDK is going to rise. Now, what colour should I do it in? Red. Actually, I'll do it in orange. Orange will look better. Okay, so in the final stage of the cell cycle, this M phase, uh, the final um, CDK is going to rise, and this is going to be in orange. This is the M CDK. Okay, and this is going to um, this is going to control most of uh, the activity in mitosis, and we're going to see how. So this is actually the cyclin B with CDK1 complex, so a cyclin B, CDK1 complex. Cyclin B has another name, it's also sometimes referred to as M cyclin, so if you hear people talking about M cyclin, what they mean is cyclin B. Okay, right, so what we're going to see is we're going to have a quick revision of how you move from the G2 to the M phase, so how you increase the level of this cyclin B, CDK1 uh, complex or this MCDK and then we're going to see how MCDK is going to actually contribute to going into mitosis and we'll see the different stages of mitosis. Okay, right, so MCDK then. Right, so MCDK uh, is this complex of cyclin B with CDK1. Okay, so here we have cyclin B with CDK1 together. So this is CDK1, or cyclin-dependent kinase 1. So cyclin-dependent kinase 1. I'll write its name out in full. Cyclin-dependent kinase 1. Okay, and it's bound at the moment to uh, cyclin B, or as I said in the um, just now, it's also sometimes called uh, M cyclin, but we'll call it cyclin B. M cyclin is gradually being phased out. You see, uh, when they originally came up with all of this, the way they were doing it was they were just literally measuring the levels of these cyclin. Um, cyclin-dependent kinase complexes in the cell as the cell cycle progresses, and that's how they came up with that graph that I showed you previously. Now they have more of an understanding of what they're actually doing, and therefore these names are being um, preferenced over the original names like M-cyclin, which was just given to it because it was the cyclin that was high in M phase. Okay, right. So this is cyclin B, so we'll colour in cyclin B in red. And we'll colour in uh, the cyclin-dependent kinase 1 in blue. Right. OK, now this is not yet active. In order to activate uh, the uh, cyclin B CDK1 complex, which is also known as the M CDK, in order to activate this M CDK, you need to phosphorylate it at an activatory phosphorylation site. So basically, this enzyme uh, can be phosphorylated and uh, that will activate it. So it's got an activatory phosphorylation site. Okay, so here it is. It's got an activatory phosphorylation site here. And the enzyme which phosphorylates it is an enzyme known as um, cyclin-dependent kinase 
activating kinase. CDK activating kinase. Okay, and that's often abbreviated to CAK for short. So C for cyclic dependent kinase, A for activating, and K for kinase. Okay, so CAP. And this can add this um, activatory phosphate group onto the cyclin dependent kinase 1 enzyme up here. Okay, and uh, when it adds that activatory phosphate group, then the enzyme is active. So this is an activatory phosphate group. Activatory phosphate group. Okay, now the thing is, there is another, another enzyme which can add on another phosphate group at a different site on this cyclin dependent kinase 1. And this other phosphate group isn't going to activate the enzyme at all, it's going to inhibit it. And in fact, may, where most of these complexes will have both phosphate groups on, and they will cancel each other's effects out, basically. So there is another enzyme known as WE1, which can add a phosphate group to another site, basically, on uh, the cyclin-dependent kinase 1 enzyme. And this is an inhibitory phosphate group. So this is an inhibitory phosphate group. So if you have your cyclin BCDK1 complex like this with both the activatory and the inhibitory phosphate groups on, then overall uh, the enzyme is not active. The enzyme complex, this MCDK, is not active. Basically, the actions, the activatory actions of the activatory phosphate groups are cancelled out by uh, the inhibition that it's receiving from this inhibitory phosphate group. So, um, when uh, we move from G2 to M phase, we know that the levels of this go up. And basically, what happens is that you get a positive feedback um, once you um, feedback i.e. once you have formed some active MCDK, it then starts positively feed, feeding back on itself, basically. Okay, and I'll show you how in the next video.